Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to address one of the most confusing points of contention when it comes to shooting interior real estate photography, and that's the issue of when to do window poles. Now you may have seen me do other videos on window poles, you've probably read about them in my books, you're probably familiar with them by now. If you're not, it's a matter of simply taking a picture and then once you're adding some flash to it, it gets the view to the outside. So that view gets pulled in. Now commonly we do that with a darken mode window pole. And you've probably seen me do this with the flash ambient, flambient technique, and it often gets kind of conflated with that, that if you're doing flash ambient, you must be doing a window pull, but that's not necessarily true. Sometimes window pulls are completely left out. Sometimes you gotta have them no matter what, 100%. In fact, in a lot of cases, there are window pulls that just are not exactly looking like window pulls, but they're there for a reason and need to be shot. So what I'm gonna do in this episode, I'm gonna run through a whole bunch of examples, different properties. I'm gonna be talking through why certain cases had window poles, not just to get the view outside, but also from some technical issues that you might have on site. And it's also going to depend heavily on the client and the type of work that you're going to be doing. So we try to find, is there one single rule for doing window poles? Not really a single rule, but a series of rules. So a thought process that goes with that. And remember for real estate photography, there's two primary clients that we're really dealing with. So most of the time it may be for listing photographies, for house, condo, something like that, that's going to be listed on a multiple listing service. And then there's also architectural photography, which covers things for shooting for uh, remodel companies, designers, stagers, uh, new builders, things like that, where it's a lot different. So most of the times, no matter what, somebody's going to want a clear view to the outside at some point. In fact, most of the real estate agent clients that I have that are just looking for photos to list a property, they're looking for truth in the photos because the last thing they want to have is somebody show up and go, oh, I didn't realize that this was across the street from a blah, 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 blah. I've even had real estate clients specifically hire us to do drone work to show how close other properties were so that nobody mistook that, oh, I thought there was open space behind this estate home. No, there's another estate home behind that on another lot. So specifically, a lot of times to show the reality of it, there are clients that will want to do that. Now, there's always going to be the real estate agent who wants to misrepresent a property, and that's really up to them if they want to do that. But most of the time, they do want to show some level of it. Now, do they want a clear view? We're going to cover that because that's not always the case. But there are two major differences. If we break down those two groups, there's one rule that applies to each one of those. And basically, it's that if you're dealing with a real estate agent, they're looking to represent the property. If you're dealing in the realm of architectural photography, then that client is looking to represent themselves. So when you're shooting for a remodel company or, or a designer or something like that, they don't have to show that, oh yes, this is the view outside. This is going to be your neighbor. They're not selling the house. They're selling the work that they can do on your property that you being hiring them to maybe come in and remodel your kitchen or something like that. There could be a completely different view to the outside. So anyways, let's get into this then to divvy up what you really should do in the various cases between those two rules, because those two rules aren't really hard and fast, and there are many different shades of gray between those two ends of the spectrum of what client expectations would be and what you should probably provide for a window pole. So this is the first example, something you would definitely think about being poll worthy. This is something where we want to show the view to the outside. And you may be wondering, well, there's really not that great of a view. I see traffic out there. I see some street signs. But this is an important part of a house that was in Los Angeles to be able to see the views. And when we turn around with other photos that were in there, we can see that we can see the downtown area of Los Angeles and also Westwood. So this was an important selling point 
even though that there's nasty reflection that's showing up coming off of the house, there was a garage door underneath up into the glass, no matter what you did with it. Um, there's a lamppost outside. You can see the neighbor's trash cans. You know, somebody may think, well, that's just not a view worthy of being pulled. Why would I want to do that? In this case, this is a multi-million dollar view just to be able to see that skyline of Los Angeles. So this is definitely pull worthy. And you know that doing a darkened mode window pull uh, using flash, this is a, uh, a piece of cake. It's a very easy thing to do. So anyways, that's definitely what we may think of doing window pulls. Now, this is also an expensive house when we take a look at this, and this is also another multi-million dollar house, much bigger, by the way, than the last one. But the one thing is, this particular house didn't have really views. There's no view of the skyline in this picture. So would I do a window pull? Here I did only to reduce reflections, but quite honestly, it didn't really need it. This was something where it's not really pull worthy, but you don't wanna have completely blown out windows either. Here we've got some nice color that's coming in. It accentuates the picture and it also shows a certain level of professionalism as well. So even though there wasn't a clear view, this is an example where we want to be able to show a window pole, but it's just not to that degree. It's semi blown out. So take a very simple house and we can see the same principle applied here. Now there's really nothing special about this room. It's completely empty and the backyard just has a wooden fence, no big deal. But this is better than having a completely blown out window and that we do have some color that's especially accentuating it. If we move to another part of the house, we can see that, yeah, that's not the million dollar, multi-million dollar view from overlooking Los Angeles, but we can see here a selling feature of the house. And it's good to show that, yeah, you can see how close your neighbors are and that's fine. But this goes back to what I'm talking about of true representation of the property. A lot of clients that I work with especially love to have this view. They don't want to waste their time with people coming for a showing and going, oh, I didn't realize it was this close to other neighbors' houses. Now, if you did see just a clear view of the neighbor's house, then it wouldn't be worthy. But here, this is a selling feature in that whoever buys this house, being a family more than likely, they would be able to see that, yeah, they can watch their kids play outside. They could also have indoor, outdoor living. So even though especially this is a completely empty room, unstaged, then they at least have this accent also to add a little oomph to the pictures. So there are cases though where it's not even worthy to get that. Let's take a look at this. Beautiful house, nicely remodeled up in Ventura. They did a fantastic job. And the neighborhood's actually a nice neighborhood, but there just wasn't much of a view going out the window. If I did a full window pull on this particular picture, for example, it would take away from the beauty of the light coming across the bed, the staging of the mugs, and the little, uh, the, the uh, everything that's decorated inside this room, the way that they painted the walls with a, a neutral modern color, the nice flooring that was put into this, the nice ceiling, all that would have been taken away. So if I would have shown just to get a little bit of clear blue sky and then show the neighbor's house across the street with a really clear view, that would have been very distracting. So in this case, no window pull. This had a lot more ambient than normal put over top of it. So I didn't need to really do a window pull. Now, here's a case that, yes, definitely should do a window pull. This is another multi-million dollar house down in Los Angeles, and I think it's about 10 million. And uh, so we need to have that clear view that shows, yes, you go right out into this entertainment area from your kitchen. But the window that's over on the far left, that little one, that didn't have a window pull. All that I did was use a little less ambient there, and I didn't have to worry about that. Now, there are some issues, though, that could have come up, like they did in the last one, where if I'm not doing a full window pull like this, I might get reflections. Let's take a look at this example here where I'm shooting this bathroom and I'm going to do a flambient and everything was fine except boom, I get this reflection, reflection in the glass. And this is just typical. It's unavoidable 100% of the time. So in this case, yeah, if I just added some ambient on that to kind of semi wash it out, because it's not a big view selling point to see a, a, you know, a hillside that has a little bit of greenery on it. So in this case, yes, a window pull was added, but it wasn't super clear. It was just enough that, hey, I'm 
just shooting the window for the window pole so I don't have to worry about the reflections. And by the way, other reflections that could come through the room, I cover that in the book, I cover that throughout um, other videos. So watch the links to those other videos and you'll see what I do about that on edit uh, layers and stuff like that, or what I call repair layers. Anyways, moving on with that, let's take a look at some more examples. So here's another example where you might think firsthand, if you tried to really draw a hard line on these rules of, is it show worthy? Should I show a window pole? There's some stuff here that just doesn't make sense. The hillside out back, once again, this is very typical in parts of Los Angeles where there, things are built like on hillsides. You don't have much property, so you're gonna see a hill in the back and it's whatever. And then also looking out, there's a view of Westwood that's out here in the, in the distance, which is great, but the neighbor's house has just peeling paint and an awful shake roof, some antenna from the 1950s hanging off of its chimney. But the fact is, if I didn't have this in there, I know the client would ask to show that view, no matter what. Now, if this was for an uh, architectural type of shoot, a couple things. One, they would have had me probably edit out at least the antenna and the chimney, easy peasy. Maybe also that roof down there. Another thing too, little bonus here, they would have made sure that that window was either shut or open. In this case, quite honestly, it was something that I just didn't catch when I was shooting it. We all make mistakes, but quite honestly, for a MLS, for a real estate listing, that little bit of the window being open didn't matter. What did matter, being this for a listing shoot, was that there was that clear view to the outside. So a window pull was necessary in both cases. Another case is when you've got something that's a very expensive property and it is the only thing that matters in the room. Here's another multi-million dollar house that was left completely empty. Well, it's pretty boring. Yeah, you got some built-in bookcases, but if you didn't show something to the outside, it would be boring. Take a look at this next angle of it. And we can see that if I didn't show that window pole, this would be the world's most boring real estate photo. Yeah, there's some archways and some travertine flooring, which nowadays is getting out of style. But if there wasn't that multi-million dollar view, this wouldn't look like a multi-million dollar house. So in this case, the pole and a 100% pole, so you get a clear view to the outside, is 100% necessary. And here's a case where we don't want a full pole. But there's a, there's a twist to this. So this room here has windows on both sides. When I'm looking this way, there wasn't much out there. In fact, the glass was kind of hazy, it was old. So there really wasn't much need to do much of a window pull. Did one here just to reduce some reflections, but the exposure of the window pull was much less than when we look at the next view, which is when I turn the camera this way. And now we have, it's not the killer view. We can see that, yeah, there's you're uninterrupted by nature on that side. We got clear blue sky, which adds a lot of accent to everything. But this is an older house. We see that there's some things underneath the bed. It's not highly staged. It was an expensive house for the, the neighborhood that it was in near a golf course. And that's fine. And not to criticize the sellers or the agent or anything like that. But in this case, it still was worthy of a pull, even though this might not have been the $10 million house down in Los Angeles with a view overlooking downtown, this still was worthy of a pull. But when we look at the other side, there was really no need to do that because it didn't have the view to it. So to try to break down the rules in this, even one room can vary depending on what you'd see to the outside. Similar here, it's an older style, yes, outdated with the valances and the furniture that's in the dining room, but that doesn't matter. What we're doing here is we're trying to sell that view. Beautiful windows, fairly new, I think they're mill guards. So that in itself is a huge selling point, but also just to be able to see, you don't have neighbors in the back, you have a lot of greenery. And the way that this went with the rest of the house, it tells the story of how this is on a big lot. There's a lot of land that you have, and you also have some views. Even though these are peekaboo views of the mountains out there, this was very important. But now let's talk about something a little bit more complicated. And this particular room, you may not realize it by looking at just this one shot, but there were some cases where the window pull would not have worked to our advantage. So here, obviously, yes, we're looking out another empty condo. This was down uh, along the beach in Los Angeles. 
and we definitely have to have a window pole. I mean, the reason this particular condo sells for $10 million is because it's got this beautiful view to the outside. I think it was 10 million, might've been five. Anyways, it's a, it's a multi-million dollar view, literally. So that's important to have. When we take a look at another angle, we can see that now, well, we don't really need to have a clear view to that other window because there's just another house right next to it. Very typical in beach communities anywhere, especially Los Angeles, there's gonna be someone right on top of you. Now, do you wanna completely blow it out? Well, in this case, you might not want to because of a little bit of view to the outside, that's fine. But if you had a clear view, it would completely distract from the rest of the room, which here we're showing for this price in Los Angeles, this is a big condo. So this is emphasizing size more than view. Now, when we go into the kitchen and we look the other direction, yes, we've got a mix here. So in this case, off to the right, we can see that we have a view. We can see that there is ocean. We're, we've got an ocean view condo, but there is no need to show that house that was next to us. So in this case, this is almost a completely blown out window view. I rarely blow them out 100% just so I can avoid any bloom. So in this case, it's just semi blown out with a lot of ambient added. No need to do a window pull. Even if I had reflections, I'd just fix them. I wouldn't even bother shooting any type of window pull at all. So it does matter. It can be even mixed is that sometimes you got to get a pull 100% of the time. It depends if it's going to sell something and it's very important. The next option, even in the same property, the view might not be sale worthy, but you still have to have some detail out there and that may be worth to get. And then there's cases where it just isn't worthy to get that view at all and you really want to blow it out. Well, I hope this was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.